Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes with Tina, where we discuss all things soulful brand and business related. So today's topic is creating really clear, connected messaging. And even though I'm going to keep it to 10 minutes, because that's one of the beauties of 10 minutes with Tina is that, you know, you get the nuggets in the 10 minutes. It is a meaty subject. Okay. Doesn't have to be difficult, but it does need to be approached the right way. So in this video, I'm going to give you four or five top tips about really getting a message that's connecting. Okay. Because if you don't, then the rest of your business and your brand will fall flat. So yeah, it is that important. All right, so let's have a look. Your messaging is not just one static sentence, okay? So your messaging is made up of layers of things. So your messaging has to do with your values. It has to do with, um, you know, what you solve for people it has to do with the story of you and your business and it also has to do with you know the needs of your client all right so yes you can have an elevator pitch and i'm going to focus a little bit on that in this particular 10 minutes with tina because your story is a little bit uh takes a little bit longer to talk through uh, and your ideal client and their needs, etc. Okay, so let's focus in on the elevator pitch. And the elevator pitch is really a 30 second to 60 second clear explanation of what you do, who you do it for, and how you solve it. Okay, so we'll basically focus in on that. But just know that an elevator pitch, its main role. Your elevator pitch is not your entire messaging, but it is an important intro because if you can't explain to someone clearly, concisely, and reasonably quickly what you do, then you're going to confuse them and they won't have the opportunity to really connect and lean in to what you do. Okay, so the elevator pitch is still an important part. So here are some really important things to consider. They're all very simple, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't do these simple things, okay? So the first one is to be concise, particularly in your pitch. It's called an elevator pitch for 60 seconds for a reason, okay? The rest of your messaging, your about page, your story, and other things that you share can be a little bit longer, but your elevator pitch needs to be really clear and really concise, okay? It shouldn't go on and on, even for like five minutes or 10 minutes. It should only go for a minute or two at the maximum. So concise is really important. The second thing is clarity. Be clear, not clever. You know, at one point there, it was really trendy to sort of like play on words and, you know, use analogies and do all of these mysterious um catchy sort of lingo things right but it soon became apparent that it pays to be creative in your approach and in your work and in your methods and in your products it does not pay to be clever and overly creative with um, your messaging all right because it confuses people and clarity is king queen jester and the whole freaking court all right so just remember to keep it clear and concise, all right? So the next part, part of the clarity is to use languaging that is very straightforward, benefit-driven, and preferably in the same language that your ideal client uses, all right? So, for example, if you were a... Um, a hairdresser for young mums, right, that hardly have any time and they need to get in and out quickly. Your messaging might be um, take time for you and we'll take care of the kids. Say, for example, you've got a hair salon that has a creation, which a lot of them do, right? So that might be your tagline. And if someone asks what you do, you could say, you know, um, I... I work with young mums and mums at home who 
are desperate to get a real quality cut, but they're worried about what to do with their children. So we support them to get a top quality cut with friendly environment at a price they can afford all while their kids are being watched in a secure crash or a secure um, kids room or whatever it is. Okay. But can you see how if I was a young mum or if I was a mum at all, don't, you don't have to be young. And I was like, Oh my God, my hair, like I haven't even showered for two days or whatever it is. I would be interested in that. And it's so plain and simple. Okay. You could even add, you know, I, um, have a hair and beauty salon that specializes in mums um, because they may as well get their hair done instead of trying to pull their hair out, you know, because you're using that language when your mom's like, oh, I'm going to pull my hair out. Okay. So the languaging needs to be plain, you know, not, not all this like jargonistic terms um, for your industry, but just speaking plainly, communicating to your ideal audience. All right. So the next tip is, so that would be tip number four coming up. We speak straight to their, either their problems and struggles or to their desires. All right. In that hairdressing um, example, you know, I said about, you know, they don't have time. They're wondering what to do with their children. Um, and they want something that's affordable, but quality, right? So that speaks to what they are desiring and what they want. Okay. Um, if I wanted to focus in using that example on the problems, it might be I own a hair and beauty salon specifically supporting um, mothers um, who are struggling with time to get their hair and beauty treatments done, wondering what to do with their children while they're getting these things done and um, trying to carve out some pamper time for themselves, okay? So they might be the struggles. If you flipped it to the desires, it might be something like, um, you know, I have a hair and beauty salon for mums, specifically supporting them to achieve great looking hair in no time flat, happy kids, that love coming with them to the hairdresser and um, compliments galore, which make them feel confident. So can you see there the desires? The other one was the, the um, pain points, okay? So you can use either. And in some industries, it's better to use the desire points rather than pain points, particularly if it's very personal, um, like it might be therapy or, um, you know, something around sexuality or health that people may not, you know, want to identify with the struggle points, but they do would put their hand up for the desire point. So it just depends on your industry. And finally, the last one, we're looking at how you help them. So let's go back to that hairdresser. When we have talked about struggling with time, worrying what they're going to do with their kids when they do manage to sort of carve out some time, um, and the affordability and the quality, we could say, you know, we support them by, and then you look at those pain points or desires, and we say we support them by providing um, qualified child minding so that they can bring their um, child and make it a family outing that they both enjoy. Uh, the time, we could say, you know, we have a, um, a dedicated staff who, um, you know, who make, who cut hair really well, but make sure that the wait time is minimal. And what was the other pain point? Oh, the affordability and the quality. And providing top quality cuts, colouring and treatments at a price that they can afford so that they don't have to worry they're breaking the family budget in order to um, look after themselves. Okay, so let me recap those five important points when it comes to your messaging. And in particular, these points apply to your elevator pitch, or as I like to say it, the connecting statement. The job of your elevator pitch is not to explain everything that you do in your business. It's there to 
uh, give a really clear picture of what you do and help people either identify themselves or know enough about your business that they know somebody who could use your service. It's the intro, the welcome mat, okay? So here are the five tips. First of all, be clear, not clever. Like clever brings usually confusion. Be concise, you know, particularly with your, with your connecting statement or your pitch. So 60 seconds. And being concise shows people that you know exactly what you do and you're not faffing around and like telling everybody everything under the sun. Tip number three, plain language that's relevant to your audience, not full of jargon, unless that is your audience, okay? Number four, um, show how you address those desires or pain points. And then finally, number five, we highlight the results and benefits. And that was, if we look back, that's when I was saying, so you can, or so they can. So they can relax and bring their children with them and it can be a family outing that they can both enjoy. That's the benefits. Yes, they're getting their haircut, but the haircut is the feature. The benefits are what can they have, be, do, or feel as a result of your product or service. Okay? All right, well, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm more than happy to um, answer. And if you're not a member of the Soulful Entrepreneur, come on in. Um, look it up in Facebook in your little magnifying glass or if you've been following me for a while um, You know, you would have that down the bottom of some emails We're a lovely bunch a friendly bunch and uh, we're all about growing ourselves as people becoming the leaders that we need to be in order to have the business that we'd like to have So have a lovely day or evening wherever you are and I will talk to you again some other 10 minutes. Bye for now